The 2023 Solent Pedagogic Resumption Halls in Yaoundé with secondary education senior staff members urged to apply digital knowledge in teaching models and modernize the teaching learning process. ELECAM intensifies voter registration ahead of the Thursday, August 31st deadline to close voters' registers. Observers say digital communication seems to be encouraging more youths to enroll. Indomitable Lions coach Rigobert Song calls up 24 players ahead of September 12th clash with Burundi in an Afghan qualification game. Remarkable in the list are goalkeeper Andre Onana and striker Clinton J. And those are top stories. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the 7.30 News. I'm Gladys Tata. Secondary education pedagogues in the 10 regions of the country have officially resumed service for the 2023-2024 academic year. They were urged by the Secretary of State and the Minister of Secondary Education in charge of teachers training Bonifaz Biola to apply digital knowledge in their teaching models and modernize the teaching learning process. He made the call during the 2023 Solemn Pedagogic Resumption Ceremony as you tell us, Laris Nane Epote. This is the outlook of distance learning via the different digital platforms of the Ministry of Secondary Education. A smart screen remains an indispensable asset in the process. The smart screen actually replaces the traditional uh, blackboard that we have in our classes. On this um, smart screen, you could also connect to the internet and incorporate in your lesson so that the learners could better engage in the teaching and learning um, Practice. The Distance Education Center in Yawunde for now is a sole center for distant learning. But the Minister of Secondary Education intends making available these smart screens in schools across Cameroon. The plan of the Minister of Secondary Education is that uh, this smart screen will be made available to all the classes in Cameroon. The solemn pedagogic resumption ceremony in Yawunde has been therefore to enjoin pedagogues from the 10 regions of the country to apply digital know-how in their teaching models. It's for the teachers and the parents to ensure that they use the digital tools effectively in spite of the challenges that we have in the field and ensure that the students study um, appropriately. The world is fast evolving in terms of technology and the Ministry of Secondary Education has aligned with this trend to see to it that this academic year be more successful in terms of digital innovations than the previous ones. And teachers will spring into action again on Monday when school resumes from a long break. There are, however, isolated calls for them to relaunch protests over claims of some unpaid dues, calls which should not be an issue at hand at this crucial moment when people should be put should put love for their country first. Beatrice Lossamba in the following commentary expounds on teaching as a noble profession which should be practiced for the rewards that money cannot. The impact their teachers had on them is the reason most students are inspired and motivated to be teachers. See how our teachers helped us directly in a personal way, changing our lives for the better. So the best reason to be a teacher is to have a positive, inspiring impact on children's lives. More than a career, teaching is an act of love. This career choice for many in Cameroon is not the only available job. It is a job many have fallen head over heels in a beautiful relationship with, although tremendously challenging and emotionally taxing and complex. As teachers fight for improved wages and advocate for manageable working conditions, they can sustain themselves as they focus on the reasons they love their unique role in the lives of young people. There is a thing about love. It doesn't always make logical sense. But like every loving relationship, it demands commitment through the many bumps in the road in order to reap the rewards of deep fulfillment and life well spent. And this leads us to what most people define as qualities of a good teacher. Empathy, patience, engagement, to name only these few values. Counseling, mentoring and teaching them how to use and apply knowledge in their lives. This is rewarding in itself. 
People displaced by the socio-political crisis in the northwest and southwest regions are making earnest efforts to send their children back to school come September 4, 2023. Among them is the Tewa Mukete family that fled armed conflicts in Kumba and settled at the Itugebe neighborhood here in Yaoundé. Gerald Nanji Eyambe made an, made an incursion to the family of 11 that needs assistance to meet up with basic needs. The educational well-being of the Tewa Mukete family who fled six years ago from Kumba in the southwest region as a result of the socio-political upheaval appears uncertain for this school year. The family of 11 that sought refuge at the Etukebe neighborhood hoped to meet up with the educational needs of the kids barely days to the 2023-2024 school year. I don't buy exercise book. Four, four for any picking because I know I get to work because I'm a taxi driver, but I know to work any day. If you come back with uh, five thousand or six thousand, I will get some ten thousand. I give for my woman, he the cook a road to work as a Like the Tewa Muketes, Ngoa Blaze is another internally displaced. Life is a bit difficult in Yaoundé here. Even to, to raise money too, it's a bit difficult. We need to do odd jobs like working in a shanty. So I'm going to go to school this year, but I'll be in the lower city. Irrespective of his situation, blessed like the other internally displaced children, are determined to pursue their education, knowing fully well that the hard way may just be the only way out for their future. Over in the Far North region, parents have resorted to alternative sources of income as they purchase school needs for their children. CRTV's Ayok John Ashu reports that some sell cattle and agro-pastoral products to enable them cater for their children's back to school. A major source of family income for back to school preparations in the Far North region is the livestock sector with the cattle market in Marwa now witnessing unusual turnout. Most parents say that they now sell at giveaway prices to provide school needs of their offspring. For each kettle we sell, our benefits range from 2,000 to 15,000 francs. We use the money to buy the necessary school items for our children. Meanwhile, family poultries have been moved to the marketplace at the Dwalare neighborhood of Marwa, reserved for the sale of table beds. Thanks to my activity, I have been able to purchase books, pen, and other items for my children. In an education priority zone like the Far North region, parents spare no effort when it comes to the procurement of school needs for their children. One of the leading telecommunication network in Cameroon, MTN, has launched the 2023 edition of a campaign on back-to-school support scheme dubbed Momo Sukul for its millions of subscribers. The aim is to fight poverty as they intend to help relieve back-to-school stress on parents to run from August 16 to September 18, during which 60 million CFA francs will be won. Cynthia Etim reports from CRTV Douala. The Momo Sukul caravan took off from the MTN headquarters in Nakwang. The caravan went combing major neighborhoods and roundabouts in the city of Douala, creating awareness of the Momo Sukul campaign, a support scheme for parents at this back to school period. From one business point to another, to roadside vendors and passers by, MTN staff explained to city dwellers how they can stand a chance of being lucky winners. A Momo transaction of at least 5,000 francs is what subscribers have to do to get this prestigious opportunity. First of all, you have to be an MTN subscriber. You have to be a mobile money user. For every transaction or payment that you do, above 5K, 5,000 francs, you are eligible. This opportunity is digital. This opportunity is not physical. So what we do is... Once you do a transaction, you are eligible irrespective of where you are found. And the money or the transaction, the bonus is paid instantly. Users of Momo Cash can also benefit from these lages. In all, 1 million francs in scholarships will be won every day following a specific mechanism. This campaign runs daily from 8 a.m. 
to 9.59 p.m. Make sure that at the start of every hour, you be amongst the first five to do a transaction. The move is intended to relieve this year's back-to-school stress on parents as MTN management seeks to maintain its position as leader in the fight against Ngeme. Momo school campaign is coming at a very, very difficult period. We understand the context that everyone within the country is facing now. It makes it so difficult for people to meet up with all their needs. At the end of the Momosukul campaign, scholarships worth 60 million CFA francs to share would have been given to subscribers within August 18th to September 16th. An application to interconnect government ministries and other public structures will soon be launched in Yaoundé. The Cameroon Future Space will serve as a window to different digital innovations spearheaded by youths and women. The Visiting Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization, Bernadette Lewis, made the declaration in Yaoundé today and stressed that the other advantages of the application will be discussed during the CTO Forum from October 16 to 19 here in Cameroon. Romeo Kenny tells us more. Cameroon, being the leader in telecommunications in the Central African subregion, is confronted with problems of intermittent transmission curves. Of recent, the country's regulatory board is poised, tapping experience from the Commonwealth Telecommunication Organization to solve the problem. On a working visit to Cameroon, the Secretary General of CTO reviewed that plans are on the way to create a digital application that Cameroon Futures Cape which will serve as a central unit for government ministries. The Cameroon Futures Cape is to link health and tourism sectors. A digital currency is expected to be created within the online application. The application's advantages and shortcomings will be discussed during the forthcoming forum and general assembly of the Commonwealth Telecommunication Organization in Yaoundé from October 16 to 19. The Secretary General of CTO, Bernadette Lewis, said during the upcoming forum, to be attended by parliamentarians and ministers of member countries, focus will also be on digital innovations spearheaded by youths and women. Bernadette Lewis will be meeting Cameroon's Minister of Post and Telecommunications this Wednesday. And we are now receiving the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization, CTO, Mrs. Bernadette uh, Lewis. Good evening, madam. Good evening. Yes, uh, madam, could you tell us what inspired the holding of the 61st meeting of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organization from the October 16th here in Cameroon to 19? Well, this is part of the thrust, the new focus of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Union mm. to support its member countries in digital transformation. And when I say digital transformation, it's a process by which technology is incorporated in every aspect of life so that it makes a tremendous difference in terms of efficiency and mm -hmm. speed mm -hmm. and and uh, it really is to benefit the application of tele telecommunications and information and communications technologies will really enhance life in any country and we're so happy to be in the Cameroon uh, the Cameroon has been a long-standing mm -hmm. member of the CTO and they had offered since 2019 to host a CTO event and so we are here now with our new thrust and focus mm -hmm. so we're happy to be accept that invitation to come to Cameroon and start that discussion or continue the discussion rather on digital transformation. So what are the issues of the agenda of the meeting? The, the October meeting we will be focusing on why mm -hmm. countries must transform digitally, mm -hmm. what is the imperative, mm -hmm. and then helping them understand, help, helping the, the, the powers that be and ordinary citizens of the Cameroon, what are the essential things that have to be done to make that transformation, to make the adoption of information and communication technologies effective and successful so that it transforms operations in many different spheres. And we should not think of, when we say digital technology, we shouldn't just think about the technical things and the technical people and the sciences technology is for everyone it can certainly impact 
and enhance whatever we do. So, um, it, you know, there are so many tools that are readily available that if we use them, they could make a tr tremendous difference in terms of our efficiency and our speed and, and many things like yes, that. Yes, uh, you are proposing uh, the Cameroon Future Space application. What is it all about? Well, it is uh, an imaginary space of what Cameroon could be in the future mm -hmm. if information and communication technologies are effectively adopted. So we will be showing in Cameroon Futurescape what a digital school would look like, how you can reach uh, communities in the hinterland, rural mm. communities, mm -hmm. and provide uh, an urban quality of education to people well, yes. So that is just one example. Uh, we would also be showing, you know, um, a, a, a digital courtroom where you don't have to bring people from another country. The witness may have been out abroad that you use the technology to convene your courtroom sessions. Mm -hmm. You file all the documents electronically. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it, it speeds up justice. It, it makes the, the, the mechanisms for delivering justice, it makes it more efficient. It's going to speed it up, you know. Mm. Um, as far as government services are concerned, we're going to be demonstrating what it is like to be able to stay from your phone mm -hmm. and apply for a marriage certificate mm -hmm. or a, a birth certificate or a, you know, whatever government mm -hmm. services. And then the government, it digitizing enables the government to know its citizens in a very real way and, and understand what their needs are and address social issues using the technology. Yes, uh, Madam Bernadette Lewis. And uh, what are the identified digital problems faced by Cameroons well, so far, the, which you've noticed? Uh, right. So mm -hmm. the, this is a vast country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in going forward, you want to build inclusive societies. So it's important that every citizen must have access and affordable access to the digital tools that are available. Yes? So the, the whole issue of connectivity and ensuring that your, your citizens can uh, connect to the digital resources, that's, that is an issue. Affordability is also an issue and we have to be careful that you know we don't use the the technology to distance people because although when we talk about technology we're talking about connectivity, connectivity yes. you could leave people behind mm -hmm. and the other thing is we want to promote beneficial productive use of the technology mm -hmm. and we want to be able to to uh, guard against the technology is wonderful, but there are negative effects as well. And you'd want to prepare your people to use that technology safely and responsibly. Yeah, so those are some of the messages that we'd want to promote by showing you what the Cameroon could be in the future, in the future yeah. digitally. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we don't want we don't want the, the soul of the country to be lost. You mm -hmm. want to maintain your unique mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. You want to empower your citizens that they are confident in themselves, making use of the technology to showcase Cameroon to the world. Thank you very much uh, for answering our, uh, to our questions and uh, have a nice stay in Cameroon, Mrs. Bernadette Levis. You are the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Telecommunications Organizations and we are, we have all, we are hoping to be with you here in October in Cameroon. I certainly hope so. It, it, we're looking forward to having something that really impacts and makes a difference to the lives of citizens in the Cameroon. Thank you very much. You don't go away. We continue Thank this you. newscast and just to say that the annual revision of the Electoral Register which began on January 1st, will be ending on Thursday, August 31st at midnight. Ahead of the deadline, enrollment agents are active in council areas re registering qualified Cameroonians, especially youths. And Cynthia Saptala visited some voter registration offices and says the digital communication method adopted by Elections Cameroon is facilita facilitating the task. Cynthia? 
Dick Artis Maurice, je viens d'inscrire mon enfant à l'école. Diverse find social media platforms with personalities that appeal to a younger audience with messages to lure them to different enrollment pools. Maximizing digital platform is the communication strategy being used by Elections Cameroon in order to target the youths, encouraging them to get registered. A few days to the end of the registrations on the electoral list, ELECAM agents intensify the activity of sensitization in the field. In the seven council areas, they taught a different relationship, um, notably through our regional cooperation programs. We have a huge uh, investment program in continental Africa. Uh, and within the region, uh, Semaxiac region, both in terms of hard infrastructure um, uh, on the main uh, transport corridors between uh, Douala, Yaoundé, Djamena and Bangui. At the end of his two years stay in Cameroon, Philippe Van Damme says he leaves a satisfied man. Water supply in Garoua, Chang, Yabasi, Garoua, Bulai and Marwa is expected to improve in the next couple of years following the launch of the second phase of the Nine Cities Water Supply Project by the Minister of Water and Energy yesterday in Garoua, Bulai. The project is uh, in response to the numerous water supply problems in Cameroon. Fuzz Nguang reports that Cam Water is the active hand behind the project supervised by the government of Cameroon. Water, they say, is life and come water through the portable water supply project in nine cities in Cameroon intends to bring that life to the doorsteps of populations. After Sang Milima, Bafusam, Kribi and Bamenda, the second phase launched this Monday in Garua Bulai includes Chang, Yabasi, Marua, Garua and Garua Bulai. It entails the construction and rehabilitation of infrastructure to improve water production and distribution capacity in the five localities. La cérémonie qui nous réunit ce jour s'inscrit dans la vision du président de la République, son excellence Paul Biya. Today's ceremony forms in line with President Paul Biya's vision to provide quality and quantity water to people in urban, semi-urban and rural areas of Cameroon. Camwater's input would provide about 74,400 cubic meters of water per day in each of the earmarked localities and it will enable the extension of production facilities in Chang to a capacity of 7,000 cubic meters per day. The cost of the project amounts to about 63 billion CFA francs and Camwater is the action man on the ground. On to this uh, rather sad note, the late Emeritus Archbishop of Bertwa, His Grace Roger Charles Piren, has been described as a shepherd who knew his flock. This was a recognition paid to him by the Archbishop of the Yaoundé Agdassus, Monsignor Jean Barga, in a farewell mass to the Belgian missionary who, over 50 years of priesthood, influenced the growth of the Catholic Church. Mukwele Prince Will Aduma covered the mass prior to the burial of the retired prelate in Bertwa. The Yaoundé Mary Queen of the Apostles Basilica Mvolie bids goodbye to Emeritus Archbishop Roger Charles Piren and if this was only a stopover on his funeral itinerary, the requiem organized for the Belgian missionary who came to Cameroon way back in 1969 turned out to be a major one. We are very grateful to him and we thank God for this gift he gave us as a great pastor, a great chauffeur, a great man of God. Crowning memories of the deceased and retired head of the Beto Diocese as shepherd who knew his flock, the Archbishop of Yaoundé, in the presence of state dignitaries and written homage of the presidential couple called on all to uphold the legacy of love and commitment showed in the over half a century service by the departed prelate. A man of multi dimensions I knew for a short time, charitable and humane to the core. After this celebration, we are taking the road to Bertua, and uh, the celebration will start tonight when we arrive at Bertua. The 88 year old, who was first Bishop of Baturi before serving as Archbishop of Bertua for over 10 years prior to his retirement, will be laid to rest in Bertua. 
In a related development, members of the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement from the Kunki North, South and East sections have equally paid tribute to the late Mama Elise Kamsu, mother of Honorable Abe Quinche, in a traditional ceremony typical of the Bamileke people. The two-day ceremony was an opportunity for sympathizers of CPDM to honor the life of their deceased member and show their solidarity towards the Honorable Member of Parliament, who is also CPDM Section President for the Kunki. Details with Fame Bunyi Ayize in CRTV West. With the CPDM party uniform of the deceased hanging conspicuously at the center of the funeral ground in Pete Banjun, men, women and youth from all the CPDM sections in the Kunki turned out a mass to honor the life of one of theirs. They also came as a show of solidarity to the Honorable Albert Quincher, who is both CPDM President of the Kunki North and Head of the CPDM Permanent Divisional Delegation for the Kunki. As a member of the party, it was our duty to come and honor a mother, a mother who has worked tremendously for the good of the party. She was the mother of uh, Honorable uh, Quincher Albert, who is our member of parliament, and it was our duty to come and stand behind him. Stomping their feet and making ululations, sympathizers of the CPDM closed the two-day traditional ceremony organized in honor of the late Mama Elise Kamsu, who will be remembered for her loyalty to the party. In our running series this evening, we focus on the various attitudes of Catholic Christians in holy places. Student journalist Leila Benyela went finding out from some parish from some parishes in the nation's capital what is expected of Catholic Christians during Mass celebration. The Holy Mass is the height of prayer in the Catholic Church. When coming for the Eucharistic celebration, Catholic Christians are thus expected to be composed. To be there before that the mass start to meditate in silence or to read the texts of the day who are invited to receive the body and blood of christ only the christians who are in uh, normal disposition other attitudes like the use of cell phones during mass is prohibited when the mass start with the sign of the cross. It's not the time to answer to phone. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have to wear normally dress without exposing some part of our body. Nonetheless, Christians are expected to live holy and exemplary lives so as to be the light in a world that is bleak. The Speaker of the National Assembly, the Right Honorable Kavayike Jibril, has personally presided over the grand finale of the ninth edition of the Buka Abdurrahim Championship in Tokumberi Mayo Sava Division Far North Region. The competition is organized to reinforce social cohesion and peace, as you tell us, Henry Tato Ekambi in Marwa. After recent upheavals in a clan in Tokumbere in the Mayosaba division of the far north, this fraternity walk was staged by the sons and daughters of the subdivision to consolidate peace and let social cohesion reign in the future. This was one of the activities on the sidelines of the final of the Buka Abdurrahim Holiday Championship placed under the high patronage of the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Right Honorable Kabayege Jibril, who was present himself in the football final. I am very impressed about the performance of this tournament and the objective of this tournament, which has gone through the policy of our Ex Excellency President Pobia, for assembling people, for making people to live in peace, to tell to our young people, enjoyment is finished. They must go back to school. And those who need a job, we are ready to help them. The final of the ninth edition of the Holiday Championship that was arbitrated by the International Referee Alum CD featured the participation of other top personalities and invitees. 
Cereals and back to school supplies were also offered to the population to crown the sporting event. We conclude with this uh, report where Indomitable Lions head coach Rigobert Song Bahanak has made public a list of 24 players ahead of the last Afghan qualifying encounter against Burundi on September 12th in Garoua. Remarkable among the comebacks is the Lions Den is goalkeeper Andre Onana and forward Clinton J. The list was published today at the Fika Food Technical Center with some specific specificities of the new Lions list. Rilbert Ongene tells us more. 19-year-old Olympic of Marseille forward Francois Régis Mugi is the lone greenhorn to be selected by head coach Rigobert Song Bahanak in his 24-man squad. The young talent joins the national team after scoring two goals during the preparatory stage of this new football season in France. Some 10 players are making their comeback in the squad. Andre Onana of English Premier League side Manchester United is back in the goalpost after nine months of absence. Forward Clinton J also makes his comeback after more than one year away from the den. His flamboyant start of the season caught the attention of the technical bench of the Lions. Vincent Abubakar, Eric Maxim Chupomuting, Frank Zamboangisa, Samuel Umguet, and Gael Ondua absent at the friendly against. Mexico last June 12 will all be in Garwa for the Cameroon versus Burundi showdown. Christopher Wu, injured in the last game against Burundi, makes his comeback at the central defense. Harold Mukudi, who is champion in the Greek league, also joins the Lions after a long absence. 13 regulars have also been called up by Song Rigobert. The Lions are compelled to win their 12th September clash against Burundi at home to grab a qualification ticket for the 2024 African Cup of Nations built for Cote d'Ivoire. That does it on this edition of the 730 News. Thanks for watching. Romel Chuisen Gok will be your host at 830 for the news in French. I'll be back same time tomorrow at 730, God willing. Until then, it's bye from all of us on the 730 crew. Good night. <laughs>